like our gupta book is uh, only previous year previous year questions are there but in madan book you will find the study material also have you purchased have the any book, book? yes ma'am i have the book of madan okay so i think in uh, madan book uh, there are model questions and in some questions they have just written asked in this asked in this but in r gupta book you will uh, get the previous year question itself set wise like 2022 set 1 set 2 set 3 2021 set 1 set 2 set three, like this in r gupta book okay ma'am okay okay thank you ma'am Screen is visible. Yes, yes. Bloom's taxonomy. It comes under objectives of teaching. Bloom's taxonomy is not specifically written in the syllabus, but. from bloom taxonomy there you will find many questions from bloom taxonomy so this uh, classification is very important okay so let us uh, start this objectives of teaching <coughs> uh, objective describes an intended result okay so this is what objective is like what the result we want from a particular thing that we are doing okay for that we are willing to do so what could be what can be the like possible results okay of instruction rather than the process so objective deals with the result not the process okay so do it uh, doesn't depend upon the process it only care about the what are the results there are two main ways of classifying instructional objective one is given by bloom whereas another classification is given by gagne and briggs right now bloom's taxonomy or classification taxonomy means classification you will see this word in biology taxonomy right so taxonomy means classification according to this classification objectives fall under one of three categories all the objectives that a teacher is setting for the learners okay that will comes under three categories first is cognitive cognitive means the lowest level okay the lowest level is cognitive level and affective and psychomotor and psychomotor is the highest level we will study it in detail okay here there are three categories cognitive level affective level and psychomotor cognitive is the lowest level and psychomotor is the highest level uh this uh, like uh, go in par with the mahatma gandhi uh, mahatma gandhi's philosophy mahatma gandhi said that education should be aimed to develop three h of the child okay here first h is hand second h is head and third h is heart and there are three cognitive affective and psychomotor so obviously the head is the cognitive level okay affective means heart and psychomotor means hand so according to bloom taxonomy okay the thing dealing with head okay are the lowest lowest level of achievement and the thing dealing with hand are the highest level of achievement cognitive domain aims to develop head affective deals with the heart and a psychomotor deals with hand okay the so cognitive affective and psychomotor it was developed by bloom in 1956 after the name of the educationist its name was the bloom taxonomy bloom taxonomy was created to promote higher form of thinking in education such as to analyze to evaluate the concept 
okay process the things procedures and principles rather than just remembering or rote learning okay so bloom's taxonomy the main purpose of bloom's taxonomy was to promote the higher form of thinking right now cognitive domain first we will see what the cognitive domain is that is head right it is a knowledge based domain we know that this since it is cognitive it means that it is a knowledge based domain and since this is head so also we can say that it is a knowledge based domain it includes knowledge and development of intellectual skill since this is a cognitive domain so it deals with the intellectual skills of the learner the cognitive domain contains learning skill predominantly related to mental processes or thinking processes because this is cognitive so all these things intellectual mental knowledge all these things will come under cognitive domain learning processes in the cognitive domain include a hierarchy of skills involving processing information okay since this is a cognitive domain it will include the skills of processing the information constructing it understanding applying the knowledge solving the problems and conducting research right there are six levels in cognitive complexity these levels of levels are important and their sequence is more important because they ask the sequence right so this is important but sequence is more important so there are six levels in cognitive complexity these are knowledge comprehension application okay analysis synthesis and evaluation one trick is there if you want to remember it without trick very good if you if you need some trick so this is for you kc a2 se it is a like form of mnemonics you can like you can use k for anything c for anything okay so you can form your own mnemonics with this trick kc a2 se okay so for cognitive domain it's kc a2 se so let's see it so in bloom taxonomy is two ma'am sorry ma'am what is two i didn't get two means a, a is coming ma twice acha acha okay kc a to ac right okay so knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis and evaluation k c a two and first is application second is analyze okay synthesis and evaluation one more thing knowledge is at the lowest level evaluation is at the highest level now knowledge it is the ability to recall data or information right so knowledge deals with your ability to reproduce what you have learned earlier the ability to recall data or information for example a child recites the english alphabets okay you uh, like uh, if you go to your neighbor or you know anyone's home and if there is a small kid there what what the parents do okay so let's um, they ask their uh, child that now uh, like recite the alphabets recite the abcd okay so if the that kid is reciting the abcd in front of you it means that he or she is using the knowledge uh, knowledge uh, knowledge part of the cognitive domain right so knowledge means when you are able to reproduce anything recall anything so that is the knowledge if i ask you that tell me the nine coordinates of the swayam and if you are reciting that so it means that you are using your knowledge domain okay to uh, to reproduce or like to recall the data what you have learned earlier second is comprehension it is the ability to grasp the meaning here in knowledge 
you the the kid it, it is possible that kid doesn't know what is the meaning what what is the meaning what he is saying it is possible that he doesn't know but in comprehension comprehension it is the ability to grasp the meaning you are knowing the meaning of what you are reciting okay or comprehension is more advanced than knowledge for example a child can explain summarize paraphrase describe or illustrate so this will come under the comprehension means when the children is mm, starting to understand the meaning of certain things so that is comprehension for example um okay the very common example is like uh, in in class 7 suppose a comprehension mm, comprehension topic has came in the examination so in comprehension a passage is given given and below the passage the questions are given right so the uh, the children have to answer from that question the answers are there the children have to answer from the comprehension itself so if the children will understand the comprehension properly then only he will be able to answer right so comprehension is the ability to getting the meaning of such something and knowledge is to reciting something without the knowledge of what it is now the third is application it converts the abstract knowledge into practice okay like if you if you have uh, studied addition in the classroom and when you are going to buy something and you are using that principle addition subtraction multiplication anything it means that you are applying your knowledge so this is the thing application it converts the abstract knowledge into practice application is the ability to utilize knowledge into in a new situation for example a child can use computer to make a ppt okay if if you told for the children about computer in the classroom and uh like about powerpoint in the class and in the homework you have given that you have to make ppt on this topic and if a child is able to make that ppt is if a child is able to apply that abstract knowledge into uh, like um, practice at um, like at their own you can say that it is application part a medical intern applies what she learned in a medical class to the patient okay this is the application part the fourth is analyze first is application then analyze it refers the ability to differentiate facts and opinion like when a children is able to compare compare the things pick out the similarities uh, pick point the differences okay categorize things analyze things categorize things compare contrast you can say that this is the <coughs> analyze analyzes ability of the learner next is synthesis this is just the uh, just the opposite of the synthesis it means that it is the ability to integrate facts it means to differentiate the facts it means to integrate the facts integrate different elements or concepts in order to form a sound pattern so a new meaning can be established one can create something of his her own for example a therapist combines yoga and sound therapy so we are combining two things we are combining yoga and sound therapy so it means the synthesis is there next is evaluation we have studied evaluation in a very detailed manner evaluation is the ability to come up with judgments about the importance of the concept that how well how well you understood the concepts okay to what extent the learner understood the concept so this is what k c a 2 s e and this is the cognitive domain in the bloom's taxonomy right next is affective domain this is emotion based or it was related with the heart right so this teaching domain includes the manner in which we deal with things emotionally such as our feelings our values appreciation enthusiasm motivation and attitude this domain is categorized into five sub domain the first uh, you, the trick is r2 voc r2 voc or r2 voc 
and the trick for the uh, cognitive domain was K C A two S E. And here R two woke. R means receive, receive then respond. Okay, then valuing, organization, characterization, right? So receiving. Receiving involves passive paying attention. Okay, like not actively, but you are just pay, if someone is telling you something, you are just passively uh, listening that thing. Involves passive paying attention and being aware of the existence of certain ideas, materials, or phenomena. It means that you are willing to listen. Okay, so receiving means passively paying attention to something. Responding means actively participating in the learning process. You are not only aware of the stimulus but reacting to the same way. For example, in receiving, you want to uh, you want to learn to drive the two wheeler scooty something like that. Okay, and um, the instructor like whom is teaching you is telling you something, and you are just just listening at what he is, he is uh, saying, right? You are just passively paying attention. You are just getting the ideas, the phenomena, all that. In responding, so when you are actively participating in the learning process, like now you are on the driving seat, you are just learning what is clutch, what is like where, how to stop it, okay? Like you are not only aware of the stimulus, but you are also reacting to it, okay? Then the instructor is saying to you, that this is the way uh, the scooty turns on, and now you are turning it on. So it means that you are responding. Okay. Now valuing refers to ability to see the value or worth of something and express it. Okay. Valuing means we are valuing something. Now organizing, putting together different values, different information and ideas, and then relating them to already held belief to create your own unique value system. Okay. In organizing, we are creating our own info, set of information, our own value system. In characterizing, acting consistently, consistently in accordance with the values, you have inter internalized it. Willingness to change one's behavior or way of life. So this is what characterizing. Now you have made something as your character. Okay, like it is now inbuilt in you. So these are the affective domain. And in affective domain, the trick, trick was R to woke. R means receiving, responding. V is valuing. O is organizing. C is characterizing. Five things are there in the affective domain. Now, psychomotor domain. See, these sequence, these sequence are very important. These sequence are very important. Okay. What comes first? What comes last? You will find questions. On sequence. Next is psychomotor domain, or that is action based, right? It is mainly concerned with the acquisition of technical skill. Okay. Uh, from the Gandhi's perspective, psychomotor domains deal with hand. Okay. Development of hand. It means development of skills. It describes the ability to physically manipulate a tool or instrument, like a hand or a Trick is impan. Okay. The so first is observing and imitation. Like imitation means what? To copy something. Okay, that is imitation. It involves active mental attending of a physical behavior and attempted copying of physical behavior. For example, your mother is cooking food in the kitchen and you don't know how to cook food. So you are in the kitchen and you are watching your mother cooking food. So you are just mentally attending the things, okay? And you also, you are copying something from her behavior. Like, like if she is cutting vegetables and you are helping him, you are imitating your mother, right? So this is what observing and imitation. The second is manipulation. It means performing certain actions by memory or following instruction. So now your mother is not at home. She went for shopping. You have to cook something for you. So now, what we what you will do that you will cut the vegetables, chop the vegetables, and we uh, try to cook something 
by your memory okay or you can just call your mother and she will instruct you on the phone and then you will cook something so it means that performing certain actions by memory or following the instruction first is imitate then manipulate third is precision accuracy in performance increases with practice now you are going you are practicing cooking daily so now you are like just uh, uh, you are able to cook uh, you are able to cook certain things without the help of your mother so you are just practicing and your accuracy is increasing day by day precision is increasing day by day fourth is articulation articulation means achieving the desired level of efficiency and effectiveness by practice now in articulation you are able to cook every type of food okay uh, every type of food with a taste so after precision it is articulation it like articulation is more um, like more accurate in performance than the precision itself next is uh, naturalization a skill is internalized and learner is able to adapt modify or design new techniques methods or procedure according to the requirement of a situation now in this step you are just pro in cooking you are just such a beautiful cook that you can go to the master chef okay so this is that step in psychomotor domain there are five things in pan i is imitation m is manipulation p is precision a is articulation n is naturalization okay so this was the bloom taxonomy any doubt in this ma'am what ma'am what written that trick in pan this is trick like i for imitation m for manipulation p oh. for precision right yes yes got it just uh, most of them you have given acronyms ma'am it is easy now to learn hmm okay so this is the gadney's hierarchy of learning okay just look at this in gadney's hierarchy of learning at the bottom is signal learning then stimulus response learning chaining verbal association multiple discrimination concept learning rule learning and problem solving so this this uh, gadney's hierarchy you have to learn okay and in this the signal learning comes under the classical conditioning okay the stimulus response comes under the operant conditioning it was given by pavlo and it was given by skinner okay and these are the behavior behavior aspect like 1 2 3 4 these four are the behavior aspect and the upper four are the cognitive aspect okay so let's just let's, uh, first is what signal learning okay so sequence is important like signal learning means that you are able to learn the signals when the learner is able to learn some signals like flash card something for uh, the very common example is that on the signal if there is red light you know that now it's time to stop Ma okay yes sorry for interrupting uh, if it is gagnes then what we have learned abhi bloom taxonomy we have studied bloom taxonomy they are different yes they are different okay 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 ma'am okay so signal learning means that as, as you see the red signal on the uh, like uh, any 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 road or any 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 particular point okay so mm -hmm. red yes nothing ma'am i just said yes okay so uh, there is no one that is telling you that now you need to stop as you see the red light you are just you are stop okay you uh, there is no one that continuously need to tell you okay now it's time to stop please stop please stop it's not like that 
So now your mind is very well trained that if it is green light, your vehicle will start moving. Okay, no one is there to tell you. So this is what signal learning. Okay, like red for stop, green for go. Second is stimulus. Stim stimulus means response learning. Like uh, one more thing, signal learning given by classical conditioning. This is your homework. Read about classical conditioning. There was certain experiment performed, like on uh, uh, dog, one, no man, dog and a mouse. Okay, one in one in one thing there was dog and one in one experiment it was mouse. Okay? Mouse is operant, I think, ma'am. Okay, okay, condition. okay. So they use Skinner used mouse and Pablo used dog. Okay, so in this, like uh, they put the dog in a cage and. Uh, at 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 particular time they ring a bell and af and after the bell uh, after the bell had rung they were given food the dog were given food okay so it was noticed that every time when the bell was rung like uh, they were just a saliva was coming out of their mouth of, okay so like they know that if the bell had the bell had rung now it is time for food okay so this is classical conditioning. So, uh, stimulus, the stimulus thing is based on the uh, what operant conditioning, right? And signal learning is based on the classical, classical conditioning. So, stimulus uh, means response learning. Like if your doorbell, doorbell is ringing and if any child is at home, you need not to tell them that bell is ringing, open the door. They know that if the bell is ringing, someone is at the door, they just rush to the door, okay? They just rush to the door and open the door. And um, like nowadays, mobile phone is very common. So like children are not so fascinated about the mobile, but in the back time, when the mobiles were just coming, okay? And the, if the landlines were there, like landlines were there, and the frequency of phone coming was very less. So when there is a bell ringing, okay, uh, telephone bell is ringing, landline bell is ringing. If a child is there, they just rush to the phone. Okay, they pick up the phone very quickly. So this is the response learning. That if the bell is ringing, they know that now it's time to pick up the phone. It's time to open the door. Okay, so this is the stimulus learning. Third is chaining. To so start linking the things. Okay, like uh, children are playing with doll so they know that now how to play with doll or you can say that if uh, they are given a kitchen set so they are they are using the gas and then pu uh, putting some vessel on it so they they are not able to link the things that in order to cook something we need like gas okay so they are just start linking the things so it comes under the chaining fourth is verbal association a teacher comes to the class and told the class that any round thing, anything that is round, uh, that teacher uh, shows them something, something, not shows them, they just tell them that if anything is round, that is circle. So next time, if the, if the teacher shows them a, a ball and asks them what is its shape or draw something round on the board and ask them what is the shape, they will identify that this is the circle because in the class they have told that everything that is round is circle so verbal association is this next fifth is multiple discrimination multiple discrimination means to be able to dif uh, separate different shapes like to uh, to be able to separate circle from tangle rectangle cone cylinder okay when a child is able to separate different shapes it means that multiple discrimination sixth is concept learning now apart from knowing the shape of any any object the learner is able to get the properties of that shape like if the learner is no if the learner is knowing that round thing is circle but he is also know, knowing that the circle is like the properties of circle like this is circumference this is diameter this is radius okay area all that it means that concept learning Rule learning to know when to apply Pythagoras theorem means you know what is the what the Pythagoras theorem is. It means that uh, concept learning happened. But if you know that when to apply Pythagoras theorem, it means that 
rule learning has happened last is problem solving applying all the above knowledge to solve your problem and achieve all goals okay now using all your knowledge like 1 to 7 all your knowledge from 1 to 7 applying all the above knowledge to solve your problem and achieve all your goals it means that problem solving right so this is the thing you have to learn signal learning stimulus response learning chaining verbal association multiple discrimination concept learning rule learning and problem solving Now solve this question. First question. Solve this question. Ma'am B. B ma'am. B. Okay. The correct answer is B. Very easy question. It was just a sequencing question, right? You made it easy, ma'am, by the K case. <laughs> K C A 2 S E. Okay. The options are easy. They can make it difficult by just putting a similar option there and they just put analyze before and application after. Okay. In that case, this question will become difficult. Now the next question. Which is the most desirable outcome of teaching in higher education? Ma'am B. Ma'am D. One, B, more, one more thing. Uh, not in higher education, but in any education. Higher percentage of result can never be a desirable outcome of teaching. Okay. And all of above is a trap don't go for it if you are not sure then don't go for it all of above here the thing is what most desirable so the correct answer is a increase in student achievement thinking of a student like if you you are dealing with higher education it means that there could be something related to Thinking level, cognitive level, okay, intellectual, this type of things. These are the most desirable outcome for the higher education, right? The correct answer is A. Next question. B. Uh, B, ma'am. B, ma'am. Yes, the correct answer is B. Okay. To develop the capacity to take the decisions. Next. Which of the following set of statements best describe the nature and objective of teaching? Ma'am, A. Yeah, ma'am, A. Yes, the correct answer is A. Let's see the option. Teaching and learning are integrally related. Very true. Third, concern of all teaching te is to ensure some kind of transformation. It means that there is no teaching without learning. And the uh, sixth is teaching is a social act, whereas learning is a personal act. Okay. So this was all about teaching aptitude. If you want to ask anything, you can ask because this is our last class.
ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ನೀವು ಓದಿ ಮೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡ್ ಇಂದ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ 